a preview of what the January 6th committee will be focusing on during their next hearing tomorrow. And we have quite a bit to talk about in the weather world. We'll give you the latest forecast coming up. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday, and thanks for joining us on News 3 Now. I'm McKenna Alexander. Let's go ahead and take a look outside this morning. Julian, yesterday we had two alert days, and now we're up to three. <laughs> That's right. We're up to three, and even starting off for our Sunday morning, we're just not going to get a sunrise, Julian, this weekend because we're looking at dense fog and cloudy conditions, and a dense fog is for pretty much everywhere in southern Wisconsin until 10 a.m., so much more widespread, and for some areas, it's even more dense than others. As we can see, for Monroe and Mineral Point, just about a quarter of a mile for mineral points, but not even looking at anything for Monroe. So if you're going to be traveling anywhere near the Illinois state line, make sure that you're using caution and your low beams this morning because it is quite treacherous. Now, yes, we're up to three days for our alert day and it's going to be the first half of our work week. So woo! as we start off for Monday, we're looking at severe thunderstorms to be possible for our Monday morning. The threats with, be, with that will be hail, high winds, and an isolated tornado cannot be ruled out. Going into our Tuesday, we are looking at it to be more of the heat as we're going to be seeing a forecast high of 95, which would tie our record, which was set back in 1987, and high humidity will push our heat index to about 100 to 105 degrees. Then for Wednesday, we're still looking at another day of being in the 90s with some humidity. We'll push 94 to 98 degrees for our heat index, but then we have a severe weather threat going into our Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday evening. Yes, I'm sure you're like, wow, there's a lot that's going on for the next few days. Don't worry, we'll try to break it down and keep it as simple as possible, but this is what to expect going into our Monday. For the next 24 hours, just make sure you have a severe weather plan ready to go because it's also going to be during our morning commute and close to our lunchtime. Slight risk is for areas in Dane County and to the southeast for northern Illinois. I'm going to break down the threats for you in just a few moments once again and the timing. But until then, let's go ahead and toss it back to you, McKenna. So much to talk about. Take a breath, Julie. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm so trying. busy this morning. All right, thanks. In more news, after holding its first public hearing last Thursday, the January 6th committee now looks to continue to lay out their findings of what happened January 6th and the days leading up to it. The second of seven total hearings is scheduled for Monday. During that hearing, the committee says it will be focusing on former President Donald Trump's election claims. The panel says the hearing will examine Trump's effort to spread fraudulent information about the 2020 election. Republicans such as Congressman Jim Jordan, who is a focus of the investigation, downplayed the committee's work, while committee chair Benny Thompson says the panel has a lot more to share. We have a number of witnesses who come forward uh, that people have not talked to before uh, that will document a lot of what was going on uh, in the Trump orbit. Uh, while all of this was occurring. This was a um, partisan production put on by the former head of ABC News. I don't think we learned anything new. The third hearing is set for Wednesday with a fourth one to be held on Thursday the 16th. Across the U.S. now in Idaho, 31 people believed to have ties to a hate group have been arrested. Police say they found the group inside of a U-Haul. The suspects are believed to be affiliated with a white nationalist group called Patriot Front. Authorities were alerted to the group when a concerned witness tipped them off. That person reported seeing the group loading into a U-Haul wearing masks and carrying shields. The U-Haul was stopped not far from an area where a pride event was taking place. Over in Texas now, a judge has ordered the state to pause its investigation of three families with transgender children. The department was investigating the parents for child abuse because their children received gender-affirming care. The judge ruled the department's actions could cause, quote, immediate and irreparable injury to the families. To the crisis in Ukraine now. Ukraine is getting some help on the front lines from foreign volunteers who joined its armed forces. Nick Walsh got a rare interview with a female paramedic from the United States who says helping Ukraine was simply the right thing to do. I don't know how long ago. I mean, I bought a one-way ticket here. Baby dog, not her real name, is from Utah and says she's one of a handful of women serving in Ukraine's foreign legion. I saw it on the news. I um, wasn't doing much at home. I was just working two jobs, pretty boring. Mm. How's it been? Honestly, something like out of a movie, like a James Bond film or something. <laughs> She calls it an opportunity, but strong emotions fueled her coming. This is a human thing. You can't sit back and watch. It's like sitting and watching someone kicking a dog for no, for no reason. Kicking a dog in the head, it's crying. You don't stop it. It's, I feel like it's a human thing. 
aged just 21 and trained as a paramedic. She's in a unit of many Americans and Germans, where about a quarter, she says, have actual military experience, but that hasn't held them back. Maybe about two weeks ago, uh, it was the first time I saw combat. I had my big medic bag on. Everybody had all their gear. It was raining. It was miserable. We were climbing a 45-degree hill on the road. And then out of nowhere, just this huge cluster bomb, like 30 yards behind me, everybody, the, the blast wave kind of like threw me into the tree line. She could see one the of their soldiers, she said, yeah. lying in the road. So I got up and I started running. And then while running, I got there and then the second barrage went off. So it was this, they usually come in twos here. Um, so the second cluster bomb started going off. And so <clears throat> we managed to pull him into the tree line while the cluster bomb was going off. By the time we got to him, he had already passed away. It's very tough. It, it thought it was like, well, that could have been me. That loss of a Dutch soldier, one of many horrors that have reduced her faith in her God, she says. I would have to say less, a little bit less. Because so. before, I, can, I haven't really seen what another human could do to another human for no reason. Um, and, and it's kind of shaken me a little bit to think that, that he would allow this or just let it happen. You know, it's, it's shaken dreams. a little bit. No dreams, actually. I haven't dreamed since I got here. Well, how's it going to be like going back to the U.S. after this? Man? I'm going to have to play artillery CNN. in the background to go to the sleep. I don't know. <laughs> it's definitely going to be very different. Still ahead, uh, listen up, parents. We have the latest updates on Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine for children under the age of five. And you're taking a live look over the Capitol. Julian's tracking three alert days in your forecast. Coming up just ahead on News 3 Now. At Associated Physicians, we think it's time for you to redirect and start thinking about you. Who's with us? Our OBGYN team is here and they are ready. We know you, as always, are taking care of everyone and everything. And our OBGYN team has just one focus, you. Schedule your routine wellness exam today. Call us at 608-233-9746. Associated Physicians, visit us at apmadison.com. Feeling trapped by your expensive cell phone plan? Here's the key. Switch to Consumer Cellular. Keep your phone and number with the same great coverage as the big carriers. Escape to a no-contract $20 a month plan with talk, text, and data. It's easy to connect with our award-winning customer support team. No sleight of hand is required. Call, go online, or visit Target to get your new SIM card or phone today. Hey, are we going to fit? At American Family Insurance, we're here to carefully protect your dreams. <laughs> All right, open your eyes. <laughs> Welcome home. All right, we'll see you later. Save up to 23% when you bundle your home and auto insurance today. Get a quote or find an agent at amfam.com. American Family Insurance. When my family opened the first Culver's in Sauk City, Wisconsin, you know what we did? We gave it our all making sure everyone felt welcome. Sharing our favorite foods from around the state, like butter burgers and fresh frozen custard. Greeting every guest with all our heart, crafting each meal with care. Believing a smile makes everything taste better. And it's a tradition we bring with us yet today, from our hometown to yours. Welcome to Delicious. Hey, this one's free. Car in front of you pay for it. The best things in life are free. It's the greatest day of my life. Just wait till she hears about free installation from Feldco. <gasps> free installation? <laughs> free installation on windows, siding, doors, and roofing. Plus, no interest until 2024. That's something to get excited about. Free installation ends soon. Call now. Low quality windows, siding, and doors. Call 866 for Feldco. We know a thing or two about beef. hy V knows beef too. Only six out of a hundred cattle are even good enough to bear the hy V brand. Only six out of a hundred. Quality like that is hard to find. So enjoy your hy V steak this weekend. You've earned it.
All right, happy Sunday. Let's get things started for us. As we kick off our Sunday morning, we have another morning of dense fog, which is an advisory for us until 10 a.m. for pretty much everywhere in southern Wisconsin. So be careful when you're traveling this morning. As we can see, visibility is quite low, especially areas closer to the Illinois state line. As for Monroe, we're not even seeing a mile in front of us. So be careful when you're traveling this morning as we go on throughout the rest of our Sunday. But as we plan out the rest of today, just know the fog will lift and the cloud cover will start to clear out just a bit as we get into our afternoon. The temperatures will be back into the mild lower 70s. Now, the big elephant in the room is going to be the start of our new work week. Alert days are in the forecast for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We discussed it earlier, so for Monday, we're going to be looking at severe thunderstorms to be possible. If they develop, they're going to be developing in the morning and our threats will be hail, high winds, and an isolated tornado cannot be ruled out. As we go into our Tuesday, we're not looking at severe storms, but we are looking at the threat of some high temperatures that could tie our record high, which was set back in 1987, of 95 degrees. Then Wednesday is going to be hot, and on top of it, we are looking for a severe weather threat again in our afternoon, late afternoon, or even into our early evening time. So that's some things to be prepared for for the next three days. But going into our Monday, we have a slight risk, which is two out of five in the severe weather world as we go in throughout uh, the rest of our Monday, and that's going to be encompassing areas from Dane County and to the southeast. Here are the threats. They're mainly going to be from Dane County and to the south, closer to the Illinois state line and for southeastern corridor of southern Wisconsin. An isolated tornado, hail, and even for our winds are at elevated risk for areas in Dane County and closer to the state line once again. So that's what we're going to be keeping our eye on as we go into our Monday morning. We're going to be looking at a first round of showers, potentially could see a uh, thunderstorm roll in. Then as we get closer to around the lunchtime hour, we're going to be looking at more more clusters of some storms that could be stronger or even severe starting to fire up as we get to our lunchtime hour just outside of Dane County. We're going to be seeing around 1230 potentially of when we're, that storm will start to roll in. But as we get into our Monday evening, we are looking for things to die down just a bit. It's going to be on the warmer side, but we're hopefully looking to take a quick little breath of fresh air because we're going to be looking at even more hotter temperatures and potentially severe storms later into the week. But aside from that, folks, we're going to there's the three things we're going to need to know going into today. Looking for dry conditions, then for starting for tomorrow and for our Tuesday and Wednesday, it's going to be hot and we are looking at storms to be in our forecast. So make sure you're planning ahead and you are ready to go. We're going to be uh, looking at severe storms for potentially going into tomorrow again early around the morning and closer to our lunchtime hour. And then we also have a threat on Wednesday for that severe storms. Potentially, if those storms do start to fire off for us, we could see them turn severe. And that's why we also have the alert day, not just for the heat, but for storms going into our Wednesday. Now, after that, we are finally going to start to see a bit more calmer pattern. Temperatures will go back to more summer like feels and that's going to hold firm heading into the weekend. But we're looking to stay dry for now as we keep going throughout the next few days. I think I need to train my cat to get into a closet. <laughs> I just was going to be out of town Wednesday night. Oh, really? Rizzo doesn't know to go Ooh. into the basement. Well, then just, oh, I don't know what to do. Uh, keep her cat litter in there, I guess, and just kind of like. Just trap my cat in yeah, a closet? Yeah, she'll be fine. Yeah, okay. Not right. really, but. <laughs> don't do that. All right, pet tips from Julian this morning. All right. Don't take my advice. No, I won't. I don't plan to. Thanks, Julian. <laughs> There's some promising news from the FDA about Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine for children under five. New documents show the immune response from the vaccine is looking favorable. In its trials, Moderna estimated to be about 36% effective against symptomatic disease for two through five years old and 50% for six through 23 months. Injection site pain was the most common reaction. The FDA also noting adverse reactions were mostly uncommon. Those trials included more than 6,000 children. Canada is planning to up its warnings on cigarettes. Tobacco products, of course, already come with warnings, but they're on the packaging. Now, a new measure in Canada would put those warnings on each individual cigarette. Officials say the move will help the message reach people who don't necessarily come into contact with the packaging. Adding health warnings on individual tobacco products will help ensure that these essential messages reach people, including the youth who often access cigarettes one at a time in social situations, sidestepping the information printed on a package. The measure is about to enter a consultation period that will last 75 days. If it goes through, Bennett says Canada will have the strongest health warnings for cigarettes in the world. The morning's top stories are just ahead on News 3 Now this morning. Stay with us. We'll be back in just three minutes.
Sponsored by RG Heating and Air Conditioning, installing train equipment and servicing all brands. <laughs> This summer, Prime Rib is the star. Bite into the new Primal Angus Thick Burger at Hardee's. See Jurassic World Dominion now in theaters. He has his grandfather's smile. Her mother's eyes. My cheekbones. But will she have my diabetes? My sickle cell anemia. His father's heart disease? Go to joinallofus.org to share your health information and speed up health research breakthroughs. The future of health begins with you. At Pick and Save, we believe it takes the right team to bring you fresh produce. That's why we partner with farmers who grow only the best. Because working together is truly what it takes to be fresh for everyone. Pick and Save. Fresh for everyone. Get inspired. Tour 30 custom homes and see the newest trends. The Parade of Homes, exclusively sponsored by Nuns, is open daily June 17th through 26th. Visit madisonparadeofhomes.com for tickets and more information. Here's why it's smart to custom order your Ford SUV. Because custom orders receive priority. You'll get an extra 1,000 order bonus plus incentive protection, guaranteeing you the best offer now or at delivery. And the features you choose. Want an EPA estimated 41 combined MPG in an Escape Hybrid? A 12-inch touchscreen in an Edge? You got it. Choose FlexBuy on a 2022 Ford Escape or Edge SUV and get 0% financing for 66 months plus 1,000 retail order cash. I'm Alex Lazary, a Democrat running to beat Senator Ron Johnson. And I'm Lauren Lazary, and this is our daughter, Eleanor. I know Alex will always fight for working families. To get more money in the pockets of working people and lower costs. By making paid leave available and health care more affordable. And I'll always be a relentless supporter of a woman's right to choose. Especially now. Alex is exactly the kind of ally Tammy Baldwin needs in the Senate. So I approve this message because we have to do better than having Ron Johnson as our senator. <laughs> It's horrible. Great. Time for another one of these. Find into the new Primal Burrito or Biscuit with Prime Rib at Hardee's. See Jurassic World Dominion now in theaters. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. All right, folks, now looking ahead to the start of our work week. Well, we have a slight risk for areas into Dane County and just to the southeast into northern Illinois for our Monday for potential of us seeing storms that could be strong or severe. Now, the timing of this will be mainly from the morning hours closer to lunchtime, but here's where we're looking at the strongest possibilities to see some of these threats. A tornado possibility would be mainly from Dane County and areas just north of uh, Illinois, in an Illinois state line into the southeastern corridor of southern Wisconsin for us. Wind, high wind probability is also going to be strongest and elevated for those areas and hail as well. So that's where we're going to be keeping our eye on to be the main areas of uh, concern for us as we go into our Monday morning. Now again, around the morning commutes, we are looking for our first round of showers and potentially even some thunderstorms starting to fire off. Now as we get closer to around the lunchtime hour, we could start to see if any of those clouds break, some convective energy will start to develop for us, which could bring in some strong, even severe storms for us. So that's something to keep in mind because this is still a conditional potential for us, but something we are going to be watching for and you should be prepared for. Over to you, McKenna. All right, thanks, Jolene. It was the blockbuster deal that had the internet buzzing. However, questions remain this weekend about Elon Musk's proposed takeover of Twitter. The world's wealthiest man made his $44 billion offer six weeks ago, but the deal has hit some snags, including threats by Musk to back out. Now, it's all sent speculation on the future of social media platform on a wild ride. John Blackstone takes us through it from San Francisco. Elon Musk's complicated relationship with Twitter and with fake Twitter accounts stretches back at least 12 years. In 2010, with others on Twitter claiming to be him, at Elon Musk made what was apparently his first entry on the site, saying, please ignore prior tweets, as that was someone pretending to be me. In the years since, Musk has amassed some 90 million followers on Twitter. Only Barack Obama and a handful of superstars in music and one in soccer have more. 
But no one else in that Twitter elite is capable of shaking up the stock market the way Musk can. I would characterize his behavior as, as um, being very uncontrolled. Attorney Anne-Marie Murphy is part of a team of attorneys who have filed a civil lawsuit accusing Musk of market manipulation at the expense of Twitter shareholders. I think it's, it's just absolutely offensive. I think he referred to himself possibly as a toddler once. I mean, it feels like a young child run amok and caring about their personal billions and maybe not, I don't know, if they, you know, caring or realizing the impacts on everyday Americans. Since early May, Musk has made a chart of Twitter's share price look like a recording of earthquake aftershocks. The first of those shocks hit the market on April 4th, with Twitter rising more than 28 percent after Musk revealed he'd acquired 9 percent of the company's stock. The price rose further on April 25th when Musk agreed to buy Twitter for $44 billion. There was an announcement that, the, um, that Mr. Musk was going to purchase Twitter and shareholders were to be paid $54.20 a share. Um, the market responded positively to that, that news. But on May 13th, Twitter shares plunged 25% after Musk tweeted the deal is temporarily on hold. The price dropped further on May 17th with another Musk tweet. The deal cannot move forward, he said, until the company proves only 5% of Twitter users are fake. His mood seems to change from day to day on Twitter. And those changing tweets can attract the attention of financial regulators, says Mark Fagel, now retired from the Securities and Exchange Commission. And I think what the SEC is struggling with is they're really limited to bringing cases where there is fraud, where you are making a demonstrably false statement that's material, meaning it's important to investors. If you have a tweet, you know, a few hundred letters, uh, it talking about your whim that moment. I like Twitter, maybe I'm less excited about buying Twitter. Is that false? That's hard. The SEC is investigating whether Musk failed to disclose within 10 days as required that he owned more than 5% of Twitter. And the SEC has gone after Musk previously for one of his tweets. In August 2018, he posted this, am considering taking Tesla private at 420, funding secured. An SEC investigation alleged that the tweet lacked an adequate basis, in fact. What did it cost him? Well, he ended up settling shortly thereafter, so he paid $20 million as a penalty. Now that the world has so many billionaires, does the SEC have enough punishment available when Elon Musk can be fined $20 million? That's not very much for the world's richest man, is it? It's a real frustration. Penalties that the SEC can assess are fixed by law. And when they're dealing with individuals or companies, Wall Street players, with billions or trillions of dollars at their disposal, the current penalties are not going to deter somebody. Over the years, Musk has tweeted about Twitter many times. In 2017, he said simply, I love Twitter. A few months later, he warned his followers, don't take my tweet too seriously. For one thing, it's called a tweet. But those suing Musk are taking his tweets about Twitter very seriously. I think the hope would be that um, Mr. Musk completes the transaction on the terms that he agreed to. Neither Twitter nor attorneys for Elon Musk responded to our request for comment. If Musk fails to buy Twitter, he could be forced to pay a billion dollar breakup fee. But that would still leave him a $200 billion fortune. And of course, he would still be able to tweet. John Blackstone, CBS News, San Francisco. There's a half hour of news still ahead here on News 3 This Morning Sunday. We'll be right back. I know this looks like your typical narrow escape, but this is a Nissan sales event ad. Get the 2022 Nissan Rogue with best in class fuel economy. We're not just massage envy. We're also facials that get your skin glowing envy. We're talking, dang girl, you look good kind of envy. All right, tell me your secret and lunch is on me. <laughs> Impress all your coworkers envy. I bet she's on that Himalayan pepper cleanse. How does she do it envy? So what's going on with this? That's because a regular massage envy facial routine is an amazing way to look and feel better. For that, I still got it going on kind of a feeling. Must be good jeans. Massage and be facials, where better begins. Incoming! You don't have to.
to love laundry to love Arm & Hammer Plus OxyClean. It removes microscopic stains and dirt for a deep, hygienic clean. Serving part-time in the Army National Guard led to a lot of firsts for me. It helped pay for me to be the first person in my family to graduate debt-free, buy my first home, and I'm one of the first to respond if my community ever needs me. To learn more, visit NationalGuard.com. And I walked right into U.S. Cellular and I said I want to choose any phone in here for free. What did he say? He's insured. Really nice guy. I have my pick of any phone from any brand, free, even the newest ones. Wow. Yeah. You got the big screen? Yeah. Big storage? Yeah. Fits in your pocket. Fits in my pocket. Yeah, you know, it's a big phone, and that's what I wanted, and I got, I got what I wanted. At U.S. Cellular, we put you first. So choose any phone free. Plus, get unlimited data for just $30 a month. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. It's Make My Mondays at Hy-Vee. This Monday, get Lay's only $1.48. Bar S Hot Dogs, only 68 cents. Origami Cantaloupe, only $1.99 each. And Simply Done Bath Tissue or Paper Towels, only $2.99. Monday only. For more ways to save on hundreds of items every day at Hy-Vee, check out our monthly catalog, our weekly ad, and scan the QR code to visit hyveedeals.com for even more deals. I know this looks like your typical narrow escape, but this is a Nissan sales event ad. Get the 2022 Nissan Rogue with best-in-class fuel economy. News 3 Now, winner of 18 awards of excellence from the Wisconsin Broadcasters Association, including Best Morning Newscast. Widespread damage across our viewing area this morning. Best Evening Newscast. A massive fire ensued, and you can see that smoke for miles around. Best Investigative Story. And Best Significant Community Impact. We'll continue to strive for excellence every day to bring you the area's best local news coverage. News 3 Now. Right now, a community gathering for a vigil to remember a former judge who was killed one week ago in Juneau County. And we're talking about a whole lot of weather that's going to be impacting you to start off the work week. We'll give you the latest coming up. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday, and thanks for joining us on News 3 Now. I'm McKenna Alexander. Let's go ahead and send over to Julian Seawright. Julian, you said it earlier today. There's just a lot going on this week. Yeah, there <laughs> really is. I'm trying to, like, find a real good description of how much stuff we have to talk about, but maybe I'll think of something later on. But for as of right now, we're going to dive right in as we have a dense fog advisory for pretty much all of southern Wisconsin until 10 a.m. this morning. Again, it's much more widespread than what we had on Saturday, and for some areas, we're looking at even more uh, dense fog for us as we continue throughout the rest of this morning as areas closer to this Illinois state line Monroe hasn't even seen improved visibility throughout the course of our morning over the last hour. So that just goes to show you how dense that fog really is. So if you're going to be traveling, just make sure that you're using caution and you are using your low beams as well throughout this morning. Now, aside from that, we are looking at an alert day and forecast for our Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. That's right. We have a trifecta of potentially threatening weather for us. That will be for severe storms going into tomorrow. And if those storms were to fire up with any of those thunderstorms could be from strong going into our severe side and then on top of that hail high winds in an isolated tornado cannot be ruled out for those threats and for Tuesday we are looking for not severe weather but heat as in high of 95 degrees is in our forecast and high humidity is going to be right behind it which could be pushing our heat indices into 100 to 105 degrees and then for Wednesday we're looking to be hot and potentially again for severe weather threats going into our Wednesday afternoon and our Wednesday evening we'll break down the timing of what we can anticipate and that track in just a few moments. But until then, let's toss it back to you, McKenna. All right, thanks, Julian. More than a week after a former Juneau County judge was shot dead in his home near New Lisbon, community members gathered together to remember his legacy. Saturday night, a vigil for Judge John Romer was held in Mauston, giving the community a chance to pay tribute to a longtime fixture in Juneau County's justice system. Officials say Romer was shot to death the morning of June 3rd. The man accused in his killing, 56-year-old Douglas Udy, later died after turning the gun on himself. During the vigil last night, we heard from those who knew Romer, both on the bench and as a member of the community. I want people to know that he was a great man, like I said, and that he would want us to be kind to one another. Many who attended also said they're remembering Romer as someone who worked hard to make his community a better place.
Over in Wapaka County, the Sheriff's Office asking for the public's help this morning in finding a missing Royalton man. 26-year-old Brandon Colligan was last seen Friday morning. He had met a friend for coffee in Stevens Point, but left the shop to get an item he said he'd forgotten. Colligan never returned, with his friend saying he'd been acting strange. Colligan's vehicle was later found abandoned near a family member's home in Royalton with his phone and wallet inside. Now, Colligan is known to travel to Madison, so anyone with information is asked to contact police. One of the biggest March for Our Lives rallies was held in Washington, D.C. on Saturday, where an estimated 40,000 people were gathered. The first March for Our Lives was organized back in 2018 after the deadly high school shooting in Parkland, Florida. Now, this year's march comes after a string of mass shootings over the past few weeks that killed dozens across the U.S. Yesterday, demonstrators renewed their calls for lawmakers to address the gun violence epidemic. We are here to demand justice. Yeah. Justice for those who have been murdered in this struggle and action for those who are yet among us. Senator Chris Murphy, who is the lead Democrat in bipartisan negotiations, says he believes more than 10 Republicans will be supporting gun safety measures in the Senate. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden this weekend tweeting messages for Congress to, quote, do something. President Biden also commenting on this weekend's ralliers, telling them they need to keep marching. It's important. Look, this has to become an election issue. The way people listen, senators, congressmen, is when people say, I'm going to just going to affect my vote. Too many people are dying needlessly. And, and what's even being proposed in the House and Senate is marginal. I mean, it's, it's important, but it's not all that needs to be done. March for Our Lives also made its way to Madison this weekend. On Saturday, participants in our area were not deterred by rain as they made their voices heard downtown. Our Talil Moladine reports. Led by a group of young students. Hundreds in Madison pushed to action following a string of mass shootings across the country. I've been participating in these marches since the first one. I remember the first March for Our Lives march that I went to was after the Parkland shooting in Florida. Years later, marching down State Street, this group still fighting for an end to gun violence. I'm just so, so tired of all the shootings in this country. Can't we try anything, anything at all, any, any step to save even one life? would be worth it. This march is also about empowering people to vote. They say change cannot happen without the right people in office. Vote them out! Vote them out! Many among those taking to the streets... Vote not bullets! Educators. The latest shooting has just broken my heart again. And that's why I'm here thinking of their students. How much you love them and how close you are to them and to think of those kids or any kids being terrorized and murdered the way those kids were is just beyond belief. Calling on officials to institute background checks and impose a ban on assault rifles. Kids should not have to be scared to go to school. Kids should like think of school as a fun place. Hoping to get one step closer to keeping kids safe. In downtown Madison, Tahleen Mahdeen, News 3 Now. To promote ongoing change through elected officials, voter registration booths were also at the event on Saturday. Meanwhile, a Madison congregation doing its part to prevent gun violence by turning donated guns into tools with a gentler purpose. Midvale Community Lutheran Church held a gun safe surrender event on Saturday, asking people to donate unwanted and unloaded guns. Those guns were then dismantled on site and the leftover parts forged into gardening tools. A retired uh, officer who trained us to check for ammunition of the firearms predicted that we would receive mostly handguns. Uh, that has not been the case. We've received mostly rifles and shotguns, and um, we've received 20 arms at this time of the day. The project is a part of the Guns to Gardens movement, which works to reduce gun violence by reducing the number of guns in homes and communities. The event took place this weekend in 14 cities across the country. Still ahead, I sit down with Dr. Rupa Shaw to learn when alcohol use has turned into alcohol abuse. The signs to look out for, coming up.
Experience handcrafted and hand-finished furniture by genuine Amish craftsmen at Wanaki Furniture ETC. Featuring hardwood made in the USA home furnishings by Simply Amish and other great brands you can trust. Bring quality home at Wanaki Furniture ETC. many things <laughs> to see all the world can be but most of all I wish you'll never stop wishing dear gas prices Toyota's hybrid lineup says go take a hike because we bring efficiency with power and savings with style think you can stand in our way we got this. Toyota Hybrids. Every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, our no cost maintenance plan with roadside assistance. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Are you suffering from neuropathy? Do you experience stabbing pain, numbness, tingling, or burning in your feet? Are you tired of sleepless nights and avoiding life due to pain? If you've been diagnosed with neuropathy or are experiencing pain or numbness in your feet, pick up the phone and call us right now before it's too late. Neuropathy is a very serious and progressive disease where your nerves start to break down. Eventually, it leads to balance problems, falls, complete loss of independence, and often amputation. Our program addresses the underlying causes and doesn't simply mask your symptoms with medication. In fact, many patients start experiencing relief from their neuropathy symptoms within weeks. There's no surgery and no use of prescription drugs. Pick up the phone right now and call the number on your screen to find out if you're a candidate for our neuropathy program that has changed thousands of lives. You don't have to spend another day suffering. Call us today and see if you qualify for the relief you deserve. Do not wait. Call now. The News 3 Now call for action team, getting results for you. When a local woman was taken advantage of by a car dealership, we took action and helped her get back nearly $10,000. After going through you, it's just like, you can breathe. Call for action, only on News 3 Now. Rest comfortably with brands you can trust at Wanaki Furniture ETC. Create a unique and stylish room with made-in-the-USA products from companies like Smith Brothers of Burn. Select from a wide variety of sofas at a great price. Bring quality home at Wanaki Furniture ETC. So we're going to start with breaking down tomorrow's threats if we start to see any storms starting to roll through southern Wisconsin. Isolated tornado, hail, and high winds are going to be mainly the threat for us, and we could be seeing that really uh, start to cater itself from areas into Dane County and closer to the southern uh, areas where it's going to be near the state Illinois line and Illinois line and over towards the southeastern corridor as well. Now, where the track is, plenty of uncertainty for the storm, but what we're going to be looking at are potentially seeing some rounds of showers and even thunderstorms early into our Monday morning. Around the time we're going to get out the door and start to head to work. And then as we get closer to around the lunchtime hour, we could start to see that track potentially go into a southeasterly track. Now, if it does that, it will be just outside and mainly east of Dane County. But again, we're still going to be looking at to still start to sweep us and still bring in potential of seeing severe storms for those areas. However, we're not looking at the threat to be too much towards areas just to the west near Prairie du Chien, Grant, or uh, Crawford County but we still can't rule out the possibility for those areas as well. Then as we get into our Tuesday, just note that's what we have the alert day for heat. Wednesday will be for heat as well, but another chance of us to see some late showers, storms to, that are also going to be conditional for us, but we are going to be keeping our eye on as well because that will be for the later evening hours. We'll talk more about this in a few moments. Until then, back to you, McKenna. Busy week ahead. All right, thanks, Julian. Although less than 2% of Americans identify as either transgender or non-binary, the ones who do are becoming more visible. According to a new survey from the Pew Research Center, more than 44% of U.S. adults personally know someone who is transgender, as about 20% say they personally know someone who's non-binary. That describes a person who does not identify as either of the two traditional gender roles. This research also shows adults under the age of 30 are more likely to identify as transgender or non-binary than older people.
To health news now, a pregnant woman with COVID-19 may be more likely to have babies who develop neurodevelopmental disorders in their first year of life. That's according to a new study published Thursday in the journal JAMA Network Open. Researchers from Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School looked at the health records of more than 7,000 babies. In that, they found 6% of those whose mothers had COVID-19 during pregnancy were diagnosed with neurodevelopmental disorders within 12 months of birth. That's compared with 3% of infants whose mothers were not COVID positive during pregnancies. So there's not a huge difference. The study authors and outside experts do note more research is needed. And if you are pregnant, you should, of course, do your best to avoid getting COVID-19. But if you do get the virus, the odds are high that your baby will be just fine. This morning, we're talking about something a lot of Wisconsinites are familiar with drinking. But how do you know when a beer with friends or a glass of wine after work has become a problem? I sat down with Dr. Rupa Shaw to find out. Today, Dr. Rupa Shah, wellness coach and family medicine physician with SSM Health joins us this morning. Now, Dr. Shah, we're talking about what can be a sensitive topic, but it's an issue that's cropping up for more Americans since the start of the pandemic, knowing when, you're an alcohol, when your alcohol use has turned into alcohol abuse. Now, Dr. Shah, many adults will enjoy a glass of wine at dinner or a beer out with friends, but what are some of the negative impacts with overindulging in alcohol? Yeah, so we have seen a rise in alcohol use during the pandemic. Of course, people are more socially isolated, um, their increased uh, stress levels, but those sort of like um, social drinking that kind of turns into more an alcohol um, overuse or an abuse situation can, can happen um, without people even realizing it. Um, but we know that increased alcohol use can lead to lots of other health problems like increased blood pressure, um, liver problems, um, and even like a lot of gastric um, ulcers, um, heartburn. So there's a lot of physical ailments that can come from increased alcohol use. Now, what are some of the signs that your alcohol use has crossed the line into alcohol abuse? So if you're going from drinking um, occasionally, maybe two to three times a week, to drinking daily or perhaps even um, two to three drinks every day, this could be a sign that you're um, requiring that alcohol. Um, and that might be a time to sort of reach out to your physician or a trusted family member to sort of um, get some additional help. And if you think you are, you know, possibly abusing alcohol alongside talking with friends and family, what are some other steps you should take? So again, talking to your family physician is probably the first step to get you into the right resources that you need or talking to a behavioral health therapist, again, to get you into the right steps that you need uh, for the recovery. Okay, Dr. Yeah. Shaw, thank you so much. Where else yeah. can people find you? So they can find me on Instagram at wellness with Dr. Shaw. Still ahead, the Wisconsin DNR shares some tips on voting safety. And you're taking a live look over the Capitol. Julian's tracking some alert days in your forecast. Coming up on News 3 Now this morning. Look Who's 3 is sponsored by Three Bears Resort, indoor water park and conference center in Warrens, Wisconsin. When the family can't get enough of your signature dish, get everything you need with Pick and Save Free Pickup with no surprise fees. So start your cart today. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. This is Connie Ryan of Ryan Funeral Homes. While things have changed, it's still necessary for families to stay connected. And when it comes to the loss of a loved one, it's important to process and grieve and honor your loved one in a way that keeps everyone safe. We're doing this through intimate services and private virtual streaming so your family can be part of the service no matter where they are. Ryan Funeral Homes are here with your safety in mind and compassion and care in your time of need. Hey, are we gonna fit? Family Insurance, we're here to carefully protect your dreams. <laughs> All right, open your eyes. <sighs> Welcome home. Bye. <laughs> we'll see you later. Save up to 23% when you bundle your home and auto insurance today. Get a quote or find an agent at amfam.com. American Family Insurance. There's a reason big dental bills often come as a shock. Because sometimes you don't realize what's not covered until you get the bill. That's why affordable dental insurance from Physicians Mutual is important. It can give you benefits that go beyond what you get from more limited coverage plans. 
because no one likes a big dental bill, especially if you're retired or on a fixed income. For a free information kit, call or go online now. This isn't some discount plan or preventive only coverage. This is real dental insurance that helps cover over 350 procedures like cleanings, fillings, crowns, bridges, root canals, even dentures at any dentist you want. Dental insurance from Physicians Mutual Insurance Company helps cover preventive care, basic work, and major procedures with no deductibles and no annual maximum. For your free information kit with all the details, call now or visit sendinfokit.com. Physicians Mutual, Physicians Mutual. With the Pick and Save app, you can get personalized coupons on top of weekly sales, all for prices that are lower than low. Pick and save. Fresh for everyone. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Well, we have quite a mixed bag in our forecast for us, starting with today. We are waking up this morning with a dense fog advisory for pretty much all of southern Wisconsin. That's going to be until 10 a.m. this morning. We'll start to lift, and we are looking for an abundance of sunshine coming into our afternoon as well. But until then, folks, be careful when traveling, as we are looking at areas, especially just south of Dane County, with very low visibility and almost none in Monroe as of right now. So make sure you're using your low beams, and you are taking it slow. Now, once again, whew, we have a lot going on here for our alert day. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday are alert days for us. With starting with Monday, we have the potential of seeing some thunderstorms that could be strong and even severe for us here in southern Wisconsin. And some of those threats will be hail, high winds, and an isolated tornado cannot be ruled out. Going into Tuesday, we're not looking for severe storms, but we are looking at some heat that could be pushing our heat index to 100 to 105 degrees. Our forecast high is 95 degrees with our record around 95 degrees, which was set back in 1987. Uh, 1987. But going into our Wednesday, we're looking at a forecast high of 90 degrees. We are looking for once again hot conditions on our Wednesday, and then severe weather threat is also possible going into our late afternoon and our evening. So we're going to break down our Monday first. We have a slight risk, which is a two out of five in the scale of seeing severe storms for areas in Dane County and just to the south for northern Illinois. Now, as we go into our threats for it, again, we are looking for our potential to see an isolated tornado, hail, and for our wind, which could be up to around 75 miles per hour with these storms that are sweeping through at an elevated risk now be encompassing areas from Dane County into the south, mainly near the uh, Illinois state line. Going into today, again, it's going to be relatively quiet, mild temperatures with sunshine in abundance. Going into our Monday morning, well, folks, just make sure that you're prepared and staying weather aware. Could be seen a line of some showers and potentially even some thunderstorms relatively early as we get into our late morning as we're going to start to see the potential of those storms starting to track their way in to southern Wisconsin at a southeasterly track just outside of Dane County but then could even reach into Dane County by the time we get into our lunchtime hour that's where we're going to be looking at our best timing will be late morning and near the lunchtime hour for us because as we get into our Monday evening well things are going to be relatively quiet for us if you want to go back outside and enjoy your day well it's definitely going to be the best going into our Monday evening but the morning time is where we're going to be keeping our eye on Tuesday Tuesday, it is going to be hot. Your 95 degrees is what we're forecasting for our high. And then Wednesday is going to be hot again, around 90. But then we're looking for chances of seeing some rain. And if any thunderstorms were to pop up, potentially again could see some severe storms starting to roll in for us. So our three things we're going to need to know. Instead, it's going to be quiet today, but we do have heat and thunderstorms to be prepared for over the next couple of days. So make sure you are planning ahead and you have your severe weather kit and plan ready to go for us as we get into our Monday and potentially even go going into our Wednesday as well. And for our 10 day forecast after the next three alert days and three days in itself, we're back to some summer like feels as we are going to be seeing that cold front roll through, but bringing this just back into summer as it's going to be into those middle and lower 80s. Definitely nice to pool weather, getting on a boat. It's going to be relatively quiet too. I'm going to enjoy that, but yep. these next three days are going to be quite a handful. So I know <laughs> at my last station in Eau Claire, a lot of the meteorologists, whenever yeah. there was active weather, even if they weren't going to be, you know, coming in that day was the day off, they would just 
it was like a <laughs> sense. They just wake up and just watch the storm all night. Are you yeah, like that? I am kind of like that. Is it I, with like any type of active weather? Usually, yes. Yeah. Even when I'm not here and or Gary or Dana or Chris are here, I'm kind of always kind a of working. A bolt of lightning, <laughs> Julian's awake. Yep, I'm always working. You know that. Lightning Julian. I am. Oh, I, I like that one. <laughs> well, we'll uh, hashtag that as well. Okay, all right. Thanks, Julian. <laughs> A Madison tradition that was upended by the pandemic returns Saturday morning for the first time in two years. Safety Saturday returned to the Capitol Square. Each year, this free family event offers opportunities to tour an ambulance, fire truck, and watch a variety of safety demonstrations. People attending the farmer's market around the square got a chance to see a demonstration also on how firefighters use the jaws of life. It's really good to give the public a view of what we do, so then when we respond to emergencies, um, people have an idea of why we're doing what we're doing. Safety Saturday is a joint effort between the Madison Fire Department and more than 25 organizations in Dane County. We may not even be officially into summer, but as the temperatures continue to rise, it's no surprise. People want to spend more time out on the water. However, the DNR recommends making a safety checklist before you head out. Duo Esrar has more. Getting out on the water. How are you folks doing today? Is a go-to summer pastime for Wisconsin residents. Good. Just got out here. That's, yep, yeah. that's cool. But with summer fun comes summer safety. Registration's expired on that one. Okay. On Thursday, Hi. West Salem firefighters responded to a call where a boat lost power. Yeah. Firefighters helped pull the boat out of the water. This is just one of the incidents the Wisconsin DNR says boaters should be prepared for. And those include uh, uh, drowning related incidents where a boat is involved and also that, that includes the um, uh, collisions as well. But you can lower those chances by following a checklist. Certain um, equipment that is, that is a must have. The DNR says you should always have a life jacket that fits and is Coast Guard approved. An adult sized PFD would not uh, meet the legal requirement for an infant passenger. DNR officials say you should make sure you have paddles and fire extinguishers on hand at all times. Most of them have a gauge which um, if the arrow shows in the green then it's charged and, and it's ready to go. These requirements can vary based on the size of your boat. Any vessel that's over 16 feet has to have a throwable or type 4 personal flotation device. The DNR says if you find yourself losing control of a boat Shut off the motor if you can and drop an anchor. In recent years, boats with ignition cutoff switches have to be attached to the operator. Or he steps away from the um, um, console with that lanyard attached, the engine will cut off. And before you go out on the water... We, we couldn't, we didn't see any of the registration decals displayed. Make sure your boater registration is up to date. The DNR notes that flotation devices can wear out over time, so it's important to check them for holes as well as proper buoyancy. Make a News 3 part of your weekly routine by downloading the Channel 3000 app for the latest headlines and weather conditions 24-7. But first, the Tony Awards are tonight, a preview of the nominations when we come back in just a moment. The biggest mattress savings are happening now at Ashley's $20 million truckload sale. Save up to $1,000 on luxury brands and bonus discounts only available in store. Plus 60-month special financing and fast five-day delivery on in-stock mattresses. Don't miss it at Ashley. It's always time for Papa Murphy's. And now you can get any medium two-topping pizza for just $6.99. Now that's meaty yum. Papa Murphy's. We make great pizza so you can make the pizza great. Order online today at papamurphys.com. Before treating your chronic migraine, 15 or more headache days a month, each lasting four hours or more, you're not the only one with questions about Botox. Botox prevents headaches in adults with chronic migraine before they even start, with about 10 minutes of treatment once every three months. So ask your doctor if Botox is right for you, and if a sample is available. Effects of Botox may spread hours to weeks after injection, causing serious symptoms. Alert your doctor right away as difficulty swallowing, speaking, breathing, eye problems, or muscle weakness can be signs of a life-threatening condition. Side effects may include allergic reactions, neck and injection site pain, fatigue, and headache. Don't receive Botox if there's a skin infection. Tell your doctor your medical history, muscle or nerve conditions, and medications, including botulinum toxins, as these may increase the risk of serious side effects. In a survey, 92% of current users said they wish they talked to their doctor and started Botox sooner. Plus, right now, you may pay $0 for Botox. Learn how AbbVie could help you save on Botox. It sure feels good when you get it right. 
And with the number one power toothbrush brand recommended by dental professionals, Philips Sonicare makes it easy for you to always get brushing right. Philips. The challenges we face today feel monumental. Inflation, gas prices, and now an unthinkable threat to a woman's right to choose. I'm Alex Lazary, and I have a track record of getting things done. That's how you know I'll work for you. By lowering prescription drug prices, putting more money into people's pockets, and protecting every woman's right to choose, no matter what. This is why we must defeat Ron Johnson and start meeting our challenges head on. That's why I approve this message. Massive savings are happening now at Ashley's $20 million truckload sale. Get doorbuster discounts up to 71% off, plus 60-month special financing with no money down on all in-stock merchandise. And bonus discounts only available in-store. Don't miss it at Ashley. A Wisconsin idea that's making a huge difference in other countries. This is a lifeline to this population. Charlotte Deleste spotlights the Wisconsin Medical Project and makes her own very special contribution to the cause. Tonight at 10. We're hitting the greens for the Geo's Garden Golf Classic. Join News 3 now, June 13th at Hawks Landing Golf Course. Proceeds help bring vital respite services to area special needs families. Register now at geosgarden.org. Finally, this morning, the 75th Annual Tony Awards will light up Radio City Music Hall tonight. This marks the first full Broadway season since the pandemic, honoring some extraordinary work in unpredictable circumstances. Lee Sheps has more from some of the nominees, including one who's already taken on a new role. At nine months pregnant, actress Kanita R. Miller danced up a storm eight shows a week in For Colored Girls, who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. She's up for a Tony Award Sunday for Best Featured Actress in a Play. My favorite line is, like the last one that I get to say is, I found God in myself and I loved her. I loved her fiercely. To be a, a part of something that's kind of instilling this mantra in me, I'm like, I just hope that she's absorbing it as well. Her daughter, Nova Pearl, arrived just days after Miller went on maternity leave from the show, which earned seven nominations, including Best Revival of a Play. Pulling off this year's season with 34 eligible shows, including MJ the Musical and the internationally popular Six, was a feat after COVID forced the cancellation of countless performances. Hello, dearies. Tony nominee and Mrs. Doubtfire star Rob McClure had his show shut down three times during the pandemic. It's not just a celebration of, of, of my work or even the work of my show, but the resilience of this community. While it stars like Hugh Jackman and Billy Crystal who are nominated, understudies who helped keep Broadway running this season will also be honored. They will be seen and they will be heard and they will be celebrated. Tony Awards show host Ariana DeBose returns to her roots among the Broadway community after winning an Oscar as Anita in West Side Story. I don't necessarily feel pressure, but I feel like a tremendous sense of responsibility. Sunday's show will feature performances from The Music Man and other Tony-nominated musicals, all of it a chance to celebrate the best of Broadway and reach audiences far beyond the footlights. Lee Sheps, CBS News, New York. And just a reminder, folks, for the next 10 days, three of them we have an alert day for. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The heat is for Tuesday, Wednesday, and storms for Monday and Wednesday. It may seem a little confusing, but just make sure that you have your severe weather plan ready to go and you stay cool for Monday and Wednesday, or Tuesday and Wednesday, McKenna. Make sure your water bottle and umbrella close by. All right, thanks, Julian, and thanks for joining us this morning. We'll have more news coming up for you later this evening.